So, what can the Zion Crane 4 and a cinema camera with some anamorphic lenses do in the centre of London at night? Let's find out. I hope you're all sweet. So the Zion Crane 4, those of you that have been around long enough know that I have always been a massive fan of the Crane series. I've had the very first crane that ever came out, took that to the Sahara Desert in Morocco about six years ago. So I've been an avid user of the cranes ever since the very, very first iteration. And I have to say, I'm very, very glad that Zion have taken a completely new approach when it comes to the actual style and the look of this gimbal. They've basically taken the exact same design as the Weebill 3, that more pistol grip style like the Crane 2S. It's just that standard pole down the middle, but now we've actually got that more pistol grip style. Follow focus on the front instead of on the side, trigger button at the front, OLED display, and obviously that now included light. So let's talk about the new Zion Crane 4, what I do, don't like about it and why I think this is probably the best crane that Zion have ever come out with. So firstly, I decided to take this thing with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, along with some Lauer Nanomorph Anamorphic lenses to actually see what this thing can do with a very nasty setup to balance, because the Blackmagic with some heavy lenses is such a nightmare to balance on gimbals. It's like probably the most awkward camera to balance because it's so wide for starters and with a big lens, it's like a big T. Obviously that entire scene was shot in 6K, 50 frames a second. So throughout this video, I will be posting them shots so that you can see them in real time to see just how stable this gimbal really is. Anyway, so shooting with this thing in London was an absolute breeze. In my opinion, the new pistol grip works so much better than your classic style gimbal like the Crane 2S. It just feels so much more comfortable in the hand and you've got that trigger and that follow focus right there. And it just feels like that's how a gimbal should feel. You know, I know like the DJI RS2, RS3, did kind of have this style, so Zion have kind of gone down that route, so that is really handy. Obviously, we've got that really nice OLED display on the front, so whenever you want to change your parameters, you know, your smoothness, dead band, your motor talk, all of that kind of stuff, you can just do that with an actual touch screen now, which is really nice. We've got the joystick over on the left-hand side, and it's just off-center. Zion started doing this on their gimbals, and I've actually been a really big fan of the joystick over on the left-hand side. It kind of allows your hand to sit correctly on the gimbal without having to, like, take your hand off 
and actually use your thumb. So you can basically get a full grip on the gimbal and use the joystick at the same time. We've got a little mode button here so that you can literally just jump in between different modes. And we've got a stop and start record button on the left hand side, which you can actually connect via Bluetooth from the gimbal to like some selected cameras, which I'll leave like some combat a compatibility that word is so hard to use, a compatibility list in the description for you so that you can actually go and check that out and see if your camera is compatible for like the Bluetooth 5.0 in this gimbal. Obviously we've got the power on button, trigger at the front and you can use that as like a single tap. Pan follow is like my standard usage. Tap it once, then it goes into follow mode, tap it again, back to pan follow, whatever mode it's in, double tap, back to pan follow, and then triple tap is your selfie mode and then holding it down is go mode. That was a mouthful, I know. I hope it didn't confuse you too much because it kind of confused me. When we was out shooting, I actually set up the follow focus on this thing so that I could use my Nanomorph anamorphic lenses because obviously they've got the gears on them so that I can actually pull focus because the Blackmagic hasn't got autofocus like the Sony's. Sony's are going to work completely perfectly and most other mirrorless cameras with a half decent autofocus. But the fact that I've got anamorphic lenses that are purely manual focus lenses and the Blackmagic, which obviously doesn't have autofocus anyway, I wanted to do some nice shots where I'm actually changing my distance from my subject and actually pulling focus on this thing was so easy. You've got three different settings when it comes to like the sensitivity of your motors and you've got like high, medium and low and I decided to go with high simply because it's such a big throw on them lenses that I really needed like the maximum sensitivity that I could possibly have with this follow focus to get basically all of the range that I needed out of my focus throw from them lenses and to be honest with you it's actually a really nice experience I've never really used the follow focus on a gimbal like this on the trigger side before and to be able to do that with manual focus lenses and on a cinema camera was such a nice experience, especially with them push-in shots. I love a push-in shot. Like the intro shot where I was pushing into the subject, obviously I'm on manual focus lenses completely wide open at 2.4. So as I was pushing in, I needed to pull that focus closer and closer towards the camera so that I could obviously keep our subject in focus. And it's really cool to be able to use a cinema camera, a gimbal, and pull focus all on the same rig and actually have a good amount of control, one, over how you're walking, two, the stability of the camera, and three, to be able to actually frame up and pull focus correctly. Yes, that shot did take me probably about 15 tries to get, you know, the perfect cigarette light, the bus coming past, make sure that my framing and everything was right and the lights on the background were perfect at Piccadilly Circus, so that was a bit of a nightmare, that shot, but a very, very satisfying shot when it actually came out in the end, so I was very happy with that. And in typical 2023 fashion, of course, we've got that vertical shooting mount, so you can simply just take off the entire bottom plate from the gimbal and whack it up on the right-hand side, and you've got a very, very fast and instantaneous vertical shooting. Obviously, you are gonna to wanna to rebalance the gimbal ever so slightly because your entire center of gravity of your camera has changed, but it's really nice to have that feature to be able to jump between vertical and also your 16 by nine typical shooting styles. We've got this cheeky little magnetic bottom plate that you, know, you can do your quarter inch screws on, which is really nice. Just keep it there whenever you're gonna need one, because I'm always you know, either carrying like a 20p or me multi-tool with me. Also, this has been the vibe on a few of the recent Zahn gimbals. An integrated light. Now this light is 3,200 lux, so it is impressively bright. If I bring it all the way up to full luminance, like that is a bright little light, and it comes with this cheeky little softbox. And you can also change the color temperature from 2,700 Kelvin all the way over to 5,500. So that's actually pretty cool for a light. I'm not a massive fan of using a front light, but I can see a load of different ways that this would actually be very, very handy in the right situation. In terms of the battery life, we've got an internal 2,600 milliamp hour battery with a 12 hour runtime and a one hour 50 fast charge time. It also means that you don't have to like carry loads of extra batteries and also charge up batteries. You literally just plug them in because when you've got batteries, you need like the charger, extra cables, extra batteries, all that kind of stuff and actually taking them out at the end of the day. 
So this is actually really nice to just plug the gimbal straight in, gimbal's charging up, and you've got nothing to worry about, mate. So that is sweet. In terms of how big this gimbal actually is, we've got a really nice long back axis, and our bottom plate is actually a lot wider, so we can fit nice wide cameras on it, along with some nice long cameras. You can fit the FX6 absolutely no problem on this gimbal. The Black Magic's fine, and obviously your A7s, your FX3s, your Canons, your mirrorless cameras are gonna be no problem. They've actually added in like a little warning light. So this light here, goes red when the gimbal isn't balanced. When there's an imbalance going on, it tells you, which I think is pretty cool, because it's like, yeah, mate, one, don't wear out me motors, two, you're gonna waste your battery here, and three, your shot ain't gonna be very good. So this is quite a nice welcome feature to just say, mate, balance me properly. Yeah, lemon. <laughs> and for the first time in a crane gimbal, we've actually got that wrist support, which is adjustable. And it's really nice to be able to just adjust that really nice, quick and easily. We first saw this in the WeBuild 3, which you remember when we first saw it, we was like, what the hell? is this all about? At first, I was really unsure about if this thing would actually do anything or work, but it actually works very, very well, especially when you're doing low angle shots and you're bringing your hand down nice and low with this gimbal. It basically just takes all of that stress off of your wrist and into your grip, which is a really, really nice feature when you're trying to get a shot and you're trying to keep it steady, because, you know, like, I know we're all buff out here and that, but, this thing does get very, very heavy when you've been using it all day long. Additionally to the wrist support, we've got this sling grip on the side. This can obviously be used to do your, you know, your under slung mode. And it's actually got a cheeky little quick release here so that you can release that lock and then bring it out to the side. So you've now got a side handle for your gimbal. This is how I usually use my gimbals. I have like a side handle where you can take the weight off of the one hand and actually hold it with two. This makes a massive difference when you're shooting with something really heavy, especially all day long. And I've also noticed it allows your shots to be so much smoother. This grip is also extendable. You literally just like twist this bit and then tighten it up wherever you want it to be at the right height. And you've got a cheeky little quarter inch screw on the top as well for your accessories. A few things to mention that I wasn't massive on, the startup time is actually a little bit too long. I don't know if it's just because I'm a millennial or whatever. I have to wait three and a half seconds for this thing to turn on. I do hope that they can fix that in a firmware so that it's literally like maximum two seconds, please, Zahn. If you can do that in a firmware, that'd be great. Something else that is a little bit annoying is the fact that you do need an Allen key to get on the sling grip and the wrist support. Because when I'm packing this thing up, I don't want to be getting tools out. Or if there was a way that you could actually stick like an Allen key on the bottom of this gimbal, that'd be great. It's fine if you're turning up to location, you're gonna then, you know, rig yourself up. But if you're traveling and this is literally going in and out of your bag, if these came off with a quick release with your fingers, this would be perfect. So overall, I'm a massive fan of the new Crane 4. I do feel like this is a very well-rounded gimbal now that we're basically there. I'm a massive fan of the Weebill 3s. The Weebill 3S is an absolute banger. And um, yeah, they've basically just taken that design and stuck it into this. It's actually really interesting to see where Zion have gone with these gimbals as someone who literally used the first one they ever come out with. Hands down, the best build quality gimbal that Zion have ever come out with. Super strong, can obviously fly your cinema cameras, your big FX6s, which is as big as I'd probably fly on one of these gimbals. I don't really see how gimbals can get that much better. We're like, we're in a really interesting time where we've got all of this incredible gear that can do all of this incredible stuff. Like some of these shots could literally be in a Hollywood movie, right? Like exactly the same. The movements ain't no different. We're pulling focus on a gimbal, super smooth shots, 6K raw footage, on a tiny little setup, it's all now about what's up in here and what we actually do in front of the lens now. I feel like that is so underrated. We really need to focus what's in front of the lens now as creators and what we're actually shooting instead of worrying too much about the gear because it's all here now. What more could we want? Anyway, people, I do hope that you enjoyed that cheeky little review and you also enjoyed them little test shots that I've done earlier in the week in London. Let me know in the comments if you lot think that this is a good upgrade to the Crane 2S. And as always, I'll be catching you lot in the next one. Right. Gosh.